All right, good evening, everyone. We're really excited that you're here. My name is Bobby Gandu. I'm Associate Vice President for Strategic Enrollment Management, Applied Learning, and Director of Admissions. So aside from having a really long title, it's my great pleasure to uh, work with our admissions team to expose prospective students like you all to Wichita State. So that's my role today to make sure that you hear all the latest and greatest about Wichita State. Joining me from the admissions team tonight, I have three colleagues who are kind of behind the scenes, Dawson, Maria, and Dana and they'll be able to answer any questions you may have in the chat. They'll also be sharing links. So if you uh, have questions, feel free to share those in the Zoom chat, and we're happy to get to those as best we can. Uh, in addition, you'll hear have an opportunity to meet with uh, many individuals from the university who are going to be a part of our breakout room session uh, after we get done with our main presentation here shortly. So uh, thanks to them. They've worked all day and then they have uh, been sticking around uh, their office or at least accessible to a computer so that they could be a part of this uh, event this evening too. So thank you to them for being here uh, to help our students. So that being said, I'm going to get started with our presentation. I have several slides I'm going to whip through. I also have some videos that are part of this. Hopefully the videos and, and audio will come through okay. Um, and note that we are recording this and we are going to send this as a follow-up after our event via email to the email address we have on file. And I will tell you that students, you should stick around uh, until the end of our event because anyone who has already applied for admission, we have your name down, of course, and we're going to enter you into a drawing to win a $1,000 scholarship. And uh, we'll be excited to spin a wheel behind the scenes, and then I'll announce who the winner is at the end of our program. In addition, for students who stick around through the end, we are going to mail a Shocker t-shirt to you uh, just as a small bit of thanks and gratitude for attending our event tonight. All right, I think I'm going to get started. Our first uh, video, uh, my first slide is actually going to be a video. Uh, one of our uh, great, one of my great colleagues who isn't able to be here tonight, but really wanted to be here is our president, Dr. Rick Muma. So I have a quick video from him to share greetings on his perspective of being the president of Wichita State. Hello everyone, I'm Rick Muma, the president of Wichita State, and we're honored that you've chosen to spend time with us to learn more about all that Shocker Nation has to offer. I think our university is a really special place, and I hope through your conversations with our staff and students today that you'll leave our event wanting to learn more about why Wichita State may be the right fit for you. Our university has existed for more than 125 years, and while I'm biased, I think this may be the best time ever to be a Shocker. If you haven't been on campus at all or recently, you may not know that just in the last handful of years alone, we've opened up 120 acres of space on campus that features two new residence halls, a best-in-class YMCA, a restaurant and retail center, and most importantly, connections with local and global businesses and organizations where all of our students have research and applied learning experiences. Our classrooms are literally yards away from resume-boosting internships with companies like Airbus, Deloitte, Spirit Aerosystems, Textron Aviation, and NADA. Our faculty are thought leaders in their field conducting research and provide instruction that can be applied to real-world settings right away. On top of that, our students are engaged with one another through campus activities, speakers, and concerts, and cheering on our NCAA Division I athletic teams. While I know the college search process may feel overwhelming at times, I want to wish you and your family the very best as you move forward. Know that all of us at Wichita State are here for you and anxious for you to get to know us a little better. Thanks again for taking the time to attend our event today, and I do hope to see you on campus for a visit soon. Go Shockers! All right, that was our president, Dr. Rick Muma. By the way, as a housekeeping note, it's helpful for us as we're trying to take attendance, because as I mentioned, we want to send you a Shocker t-shirt if you're able to stay for the duration. Uh, it's helpful for us when we do take attendance for you to change the Zoom ID uh, to your first, uh, first name at least, and maybe your last initial or your last name if you're comfortable with that. All right, so we think this is an exceptional time to be a shocker, as Dr. Muma mentioned. The university has been around for 129 years, and actually just yesterday, we announced the largest enrollment in the university's 129-year history. In fact, for the last four years in a row, the last four fall semesters in a row, we have crushed every freshman enrollment record we have in terms of the last four classes being the largest in the university's history. Last uh, For the last 13 years, we've been the number one transfer destination 
nation in the state of Kansas too. So that means that a lot of students might start out at a two-year college, a community college, a technical college, or even another university and find their way to Wichita State. So we have a multitude of transfer scholarships, uh, transfer services available for students who might start out at another destination before they land at Wichita State. So with that, surge in enrollment, we've done our very best to make sure we're continuing to offer a first class experience for our students. We've invested more than $300 million into our campus infrastructure. That's translated to more than 20 new buildings and or renovations to structures we already had. Uh, and that's just been in the last 10 years alone. Uh, and we're actually getting ready to double that investment pretty soon here. And I'll have a slide to talk about that. Um, we just opened up a brand new Shocker Success Center, which I actually have a slide on, so I'll get to that shortly. But perhaps what I want you to leave this event thinking about with which with, with Wichita State in regard to Wichita State, uh, in terms of who are what our identity is and what our brand is, and that is that we are ultra focused on outcomes. We know students and families are making challenging decisions on. Uh, in some cases, should you even go to college? In other cases, you may be thinking uh, if you may be trying to decide if you want to attend a four year university or perhaps a community or technical college. So we know these are difficult decisions. And so we're so focused on outcomes for our students. It's our goal to make sure every single student at Wichita State not only gets the academic experience they are craving, but we're giving them an opportunity to exercise it, to apply it in a real world setting. So I have some slides that are gonna to speak to that too, but that's what we're focused on in terms of outcomes for our students. So to uh, before I get started on the rest of my presentation, we just have like a 30 second commercial that I like to share. It gets me energized uh, when I watch it because it showcases so many of our students. All right, so in case you're not familiar with Wichita State, we just announced yesterday our fall enrollment is 17,700 students. So that makes us about a medium-sized university, depending on what other colleges you might be looking at. We are NCAA Division I. We offer a range of sports. We actually just added NCAA Women's Bowling to our list of sports this fall semester. And hopefully no one from the bowling team is listening, but uh, we are kind of an early favorite to win a national championship. We've been competing in both men's and women's uh, club bowling nationally for years. We actually have 22 national championships to back up our prowess in that regard. Uh, so our transition, our women's team's transition into NCAA Division I has come with high expectations. Uh, so we're excited to see them compete this year. Uh, obviously, you can see a large number of majors, areas of study. Uh, we have eight different academic colleges students can pursue particular majors and planes of study. Uh, in terms of our size, you may be you may have seen from other colleges what their student to faculty ratio. We're breaking this down a little bit easier or in a different way, so perhaps it's more meaningful for you. But 93% of our classes have fewer than 50 students in them. So if uh, you are coming to us from high school uh, or even a two-year college, our classes may not be too much bigger than what you're used to in high school or in a two-year college setting. Uh, with that, uh, I would also tell you that we just don't have large classrooms on our campus. Um, one of our largest classrooms seats about 400 people, and it is rarely full, uh, meaning that there's probably only one or two classes that even get close to that range. We just don't have classes on our campus that are, say, 1,000 students or even 500 students. We just don't have those. Um, you're going to hear a lot about applied learning, so I'm going to skip that. But a lot, of, a lot of students at Wichita State are first generation. And so for those of you who might be the first in your family to go to college, we just want you to know that you're going to have a lot of company in Wichita State. Before I get too much further into Wichita State itself, we always like to make sure that we uh, give everyone some background on our community of Wichita. And uh, before the event tonight, I was looking at the registration list, and we see that there are people from all over the country watching tonight. So 
we're thankful for that and thankful that you're all interested in Wichita State. Uh, by the way, if you're interested, feel free to shout out in the Zoom chat uh, where you're from. We always like to see where people are from as we're doing this live. But that being said, uh, for those of you who maybe are from Wichita or Kansas and might be familiar with Wichita, um, this slide is also for you, just as it is for everyone from out of state. So you see here a little bit about our community, our city of Wichita. We're the largest city in Kansas. Uh, so some of you may be from the Kansas City area and you may be thinking, well, hey, wait a second, we're large too. Um, and you're absolutely right on the Kansas City side. Side, both Kansas and Missouri combined, the Kansas City area, metro area is larger than Wichita. But as we think about uh, Wichita being the largest city in Kansas, what we try to tell students and convey is, is that you're going to get the best of both worlds. If you are looking for a collegiate environment where you're going to have an opportunity to meet thousands of new people, live in a residence hall, uh, have a very traditional collegiate experience, we could offer you that. But if you are already living in an urban environment or perhaps as part of your college search, you're hoping to go to an urban environment where you can enjoy large concerts, festivals, recreation opportunities, seek out internships with companies while you're still a student, we can offer that too. So if you are from a large city like a Dallas or Oklahoma City, Kansas City, other large cities, we offer probably some of the same shopping, some of the same concerts, some of the same recreation opportunities that you're used to in your city here in Wichita, Kansas. So you don't have to give those things up or leave them behind as you transition to Wichita State. So that's something we're particularly proud of to offer to our students. Uh, I have a quick to transition you to a little bit more about Wichita State and our physical campus. Here's a quick hyperlapse video with various views of our external campus. <laughs> I'm going to cut to the chase and tell you why we think Wichita State is a special place and perhaps what's really unique about us and what may help us stand out from a crowd of colleges. And that is this office that's listed here. It's called the Shocker Career Accelerator. And what they are laser focused on is helping our students with their LinkedIn profiles, their resumes, helping them secure internships while they're still students at Wichita State, helping them with post-college job placements. It's our goal, as I mentioned earlier, to make sure every student has a real world learning experience outside the classroom, or perhaps it's a clinical rotation or a research experience. We want our graduates to be able to sit down for their first interview after college, whether it's for a job, for medical school, for law school, and demonstrate to the person on the other side of the table that's interviewing them and say, well, I've taken all the classes you need me to, and here's my academic transcript to back that up but let me show you how I applied it in a real world setting. So what you see here on this slide are all pictures of real Wichita State students and their summer internship experiences from just this past summer. So if you'll bear with me, I'm gonna do a little bit of storytelling. Uh, my friend Natalie is uh, at the top row there and she is pictured next to Mr. Potato Head, uh, you know, an iconic uh, character from the movie Toy Story and otherwise. So Natalie is from Jefferson West High School here in the greater Topeka area. So she's from Kansas and she attends Wichita State. Uh, sorry, the staff are telling me if they can't see, make sure I don't have a technical problem. Okay, good. Uh, but if you hopefully you'll see the slide with Natalie and Natalie as featured there with Mr. Potato Head. Natalie is a marketing major at Wichita State. Well, she just spent this past summer in Rhode Island working for Hasbro. So Hasbro is a major toy manufacturer. She got to work with brands like Star Wars, Transformers, G.I. Joe. She also got some experience with Comic-Con in San Diego. So um, that's the big Comic-Con that uh, you've probably seen on TV before. So if you think about her being a marketing major, that was an impressive 
incredible and impressive experience for Natalie. Uh, on the top left there, you see Delaney. Uh, she was a SpaceX intern uh, just this past summer. Uh, my friend at the lower left there, um, uh, Alicio, is from the Topeka, Kansas area. He uh, was, had an opportunity to go out to California and pursue an internship with Northrop Grumman, and he had a really That's good experience cool. there. Uh, Lauren is pictured in the center there next to a space shuttle, and Lauren had a great opportunity this summer to work at NASA. They actually enjoyed her interaction and engagement so, so much, they offered her an internship to stay in Houston at NASA this fall, so she's still there. My, uh, next to her, on my right and your right, is Braden Webb. Braden Webb is a computer engineering major, and he actually has aspirations to really study and improve mass transit. So he uh, was able to intern this past summer in Washington, D.C., working with the Metro Authority, which is the transit system there. They actually liked him so much, they gave him an opportunity to do a remote internship this fall. So he's actually still working on that. And then in the top right is Megan. Megan is a nursing major, and you can see that she had an opportunity to work in a clinical setting just this past summer. So th this is what we do at Wichita State. On the left-hand side there, you can see some data points. We are uh, so focused on this. We're doing our very best to measure it. We actually, th frankly, think this is an undercount. More than 9,000 of our students have had internship experiences in the last year uh, or an on-campus experience uh, of some kind. And those students collectively earn more than $35 million in wages. So not only are they getting great experience, they're adding it to their resume, they're adding it to their LinkedIn profile, but they're also getting paid and that's helping to reduce their cost to attend college. So uh, we have a video coming up uh, that really showcases this as well. Uh, it's about a young man named Alex, who's originally from Kansas, uh, but he had aspirations to go work at a space organization that you've probably heard of. So I'll let the video speak for itself. I remember going to a lot of well-known engineering uh, universities across the country, and they were really focused at, look at all the cool things that we've done, look at all the great things that we've uh, accomplished. But when I came to Wichita State, I was really taken aback about their personal approach. Instead of looking at all, all our great things that we've done here, which Wichita has done great things, they were more geared towards, hey, what do you want to do when you grow up? What do you want to become as an engineer? You know, they really told me, if you're willing to put forth the effort, we will help get you there. And, and they came true to that word. I'm Alex Kanellakos. I am the Program Integration Manager for Lunar Surface Operations at the NASA Johnson Space Center. Yeah, yeah. We're going back to the moon, and so it's how do we figure that out? We haven't been there in over 60 years. How do we go back to the moon in a safer manner? How do we train the astronauts? Copy, you're going to hold the QD in. That's really my, my job, is overseeing the operations aspects of our, our return to the moon. The advice I would give is definitely start looking at being involved on campus. I can't tell you how many people that NASA interviews, and everybody makes great grades, but what sets you apart is what type of leadership skills do you have? What type of networking or collaboration? And I think that that's really important is find a club that's built around your academics that you can get involved in. This is actually the arm of the spacesuit, so you can see the bladder. When I was looking uh, for colleges, I knew I wanted to work at NASA. So I was really trying to find a university that could help to get me there. I think that that's one of the fortes of Wichita State is that they're able to connect you in your field with an employer while you're still a student. Looking now at all the new um, innovation space, I'm like, why didn't they have this when I was here? There are so many new labs and so much space to really apply your learning. It's obvious that the university has put a lot of thought of how can we match our students in with real employers and, and have it co-located here on campus. So you you probably caught that uh, Alex during his student experience at Wichita State, he was able to intern at NASA one semester, then come back, would take classes, and then go back to NASA. So he actually did a couple of rotations in that. You may have also caught that 
he he kind of joked at the end that he was he was questioning like why didn't we have all these bells and whistles when he was a student uh, a while ago at Wichita State so that's actually a really good segue for me to talk about what we think really makes Wichita State special these days and that's this innovation campus illustration that you see here so we have a 330 squ uh, square uh, square foot um, 330 square foot. 330 acre campus, Wichita State. And if I extended this graphic out, you would see uh, kind of a big rectangle of all of our buildings over here. Um, this These would be kind of part of our uh, academic side of campus and um, some of our traditional classroom buildings. Well, everything you see in this illustration, this actually used to be an 18 hole golf course as recently as 10 years ago. Back then, our president made a really courageous decision to close our 18 hole golf course. And in its place, everything that you see in yellow and green is done, is open, has been built in the last 10 years. So our students are actually taking full advantage of all the facilities that are showing in yellow and green. There are two buildings that are showing in white. Those two buildings are currently under construction. And then these two buildings or these uh, handful of buildings, I should say, that are in a tan color. Uh, looks like building three, 14 and 15. Those are kind of future projects that we're looking at. But again, everything in yellow and green is done and being enjoyed by our students. So what are we doing in this, these spaces? It's actually a multitude of things. So over here on the left of the screen, you see all these uh, logos from different companies, organizations, partners. Well, these are all companies and organizations that now have some space on our innovation campus. Our first example of that is Airbus. Airbus is a major aircraft manufacturer based in Europe. Well, they had an operation in downtown Wichita where they had about 300 business and engineering professionals working every single day. Well, uh, several years ago, as part of our innovation campus move, they transitioned to our campus and they moved into a brand new building. And that's building 22 that you see down at the, towards the bottom of the illustration. Well, now every day we have 300 professionals working um, from Airbus every day full time. In order for Airbus and all these other companies and organizations to have this space on our campus, they have to pledge to hire our students for internship uh, opportunities. So that's the key here with all these logos uh, of companies. In order for them to have this space, they want and they have to hire our students for internships. And guess what? They're actually really excited to do that because every one of these companies and organizations has something in common. They are all looking for workforce for the long term. So as our students have an opportunity to literally go from the classroom, this left side of the graphic, over to an internship experience, these companies are getting an opportunity to try out our students to see if it's a good fit. And if it is a good fit, there's a decent chance they're going to be offered a job post-college. So that's why we've done this. Uh, I have a few illustrations here to help bring this point forward. The top left uh, picture that you see here is NetApp. NetApp is a Fortune 600 company. They work uh, and focus in computer engineering, computer data storage, those kinds of things. Well, NetApp, big operation on our campus. If I flip back uh, on a slide, if I can go back to that. Um, NetApp has a, a new building on our campus. It is building 23 that you see here, a huge building. They have about 400 professionals working out of that. Well, they have about 55 students working for them for internships right now. Deloitte is the picture at the top right, the Deloitte Smart Factory. Deloitte's a major global consulting company, uh, locations all over the world. Well, this is the only one of its kind in a college campus, and they only have four of these total and the only one on a college campus is at Wichita State. It's called a smart factory. And what they're doing there is they are bringing their global clients into Wichita, Kansas for our Wichita State students and their Deloitte professionals to showcase the latest in factory technology. So if you're a company executive and you're thinking about upgrading your factory, uh, either building a new one, retrofitting it, our students and the Deloitte professionals are working together to showcase the latest in factory technology. We've also added some retail and restaurant options on campus, including Social Tap, which is a great burger pizza joint on our campus. We also have a Jersey Mike's, uh, Fuzzy's Tacos, a few other options that were created through this innovation campus. Uh, this is one of my favorite things. This is a, a food delivery robot. So last fall, we were the first university in Kansas to have this, uh, where we have these food robots roving all over our 330 acre campus. And what happens is a student can download an app uh, and then for a $2.50 delivery charge, 
They can choose from Freddy's, Starbucks, even the social tap over here, Fuzzy's Taco, Jersey's Mike, Jersey Mike's, uh, Panda Express, Chick-fil-A. We have all those. Starbucks, if I didn't mention that. We have all those options. For $2.50, uh, the employee from that restaurant will drop your food in here, and then this thing will roll to whatever building you are in, and then you come outside, you push a button on your app, the music of your choice plays, and there's your food right there. So um, it's a great convenience option and kind of a fun thing. I've noticed that this is these are basically the pets of campus uh, these days that our students and our staff really try to make uh, make sure we take good care of them. If they fall off a curb, people pick them back up. I've seen one fall in cement before, and people were like trying to clean it up. So it's actually kind of a cute thing that we've seen here on campus. So continuing to move forward, uh, we have three great options for students to live on campus. We have a uh, two that are predominantly dedicated to freshmen to live on campus in that Shocker Hall. It's really centrally located in the middle of campus, uh, really just yards from our student center. So a high traffic area. We do have about 800 freshmen living there right now. The suites is right below it. Uh, and that is another great option for freshmen. It's really close to the YMCA on campus uh, and also uh, within steps to Starbucks and lots of other um, uh, great resources on campus. And then the flats is traditionally for upper class students. Uh, and this, these are the apartment style uh, living where students have access to uh, an underground parking garage, walk-in closets, all kinds of things that as parents, we probably aspired to have after college. I will tell you that these dorms offer a first class living experience. All of them are less than 10 years old. So it's a very modern living experience. Frankly, it feels way more like a hotel than it does a dorm. Uh, for those of you who are seniors or transfer students and you are thinking about Wichita State so deeply that you want to consider submitting your housing application, I would encourage you to do that now, actually. The sweet spot to apply for best selection in the room selection process is between October 1st, obviously just a couple of days ago, and December 1st. If you submit your housing application in that sweet spot, then that puts you towards the front of the line, if you will, when the room and building selection process stands up later this spring semester. So you may be thinking, oh gosh, it's so early for me to commit to a housing application. Totally get it. Here's the commitment you would have to make. Basically, it would cost you $275 uh, to submit your application and get everything you need in by December 1st. If you opt to attend Wichita State, that $275 goes right into your housing costs, so you're not out anything. If you decide another institution is a better fit for you, as long as you let us know by June 1st, then we will refund $200. So essentially you would be out $75 as long as you tell us by June 1st. So you would have some good time to make that decision. Uh, I wanna to transition to some additional facilities on our campus. We have a brand new business school building. I'm not gonna show you all of this video, but um, it's just kind of our academic showpiece these days. And I love to see it. And I want students and families to see it. This is our business school building called Woolsey Hall. We just opened it, it's about uh, two years old. Uh, it's a $65 million building. <laughs> Okay, so you get the idea. I'm not going to make you watch this. There's a few more floors of that. Um, so it's really an incredible space. Again, most of our business classes are there, but I'd also tell you there's no business classes on Friday. So if you're a business major, you actually will basically have a three-day weekend uh, once you get into your business core classes. A lot of our students are pursuing internships on Friday, so that just kind of works out. But what that does is it opens up the day and the spaces for additional classes to be held 
Uh, and what we found is actually it's become such a, a popular hangout spot for students of all majors. There's a great, great cafe in there. You can even use your meal plan there. So it's become just a really popular hangout on that part of campus. All right, so when our business school moved out of the building they were in, which is the building you're seeing here, uh, they uh, gave us an opportunity to completely start over and this building needed it. It was a building that was originally built in the 1970s. We just put $17 million into it to completely gut it and renovate it. And what you see flourishing in there now are all of these departments and services that you see listed. So these are all departments and services that we've had at the university for years. Our challenge was that they were located in about 12 different buildings on our 330 acre campus. Well, at Wichita State, we knew we needed to continue to help our students be successful. We needed to frankly do better to help our students be successful. So when we had this valuable piece of real estate come open from our business school moving out of it, we intentionally located all of these success center uh, resources together in one building. And if you look in this picture that's kind of in the middle, this is our student center kind of uh, behind the window there. So we have intentionally located this building with all these resources right next to our student center. We want there to be nothing but traffic coming through and by the building every single day. So you see the list of all the departments that are located in here and they range from our math lab, our writing center, uh, tutoring for just about any class or major under the sun. We also have the Shocker Support Locker. It is an area where students can get access to free food, personal hygiene items, uh, even school supplies. Uh, we also have something called the Shocker Support, or excuse me, the Career Closet, which is part of the Shocker Support Locker. The Career Closet is the space you would go to if you have an interview coming up and you need something just perhaps a little bit nicer, some business casual attire to wear for that interview. So we put all these resources together really intentionally because we're so focused on making sure our students have all they need to be successful. So uh, I've shown you a lot of the flashy stuff. So I just want to show you what else is to come at Wichita State. We have a, uh, we've already built actually a crime gun intelligence center. This is actually a federal agency's building. So the federal agency, Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, or ATF, as you probably know it, they have a center on our campus where they are taking, or they have their professionals uh, analyzing images from uh that are shell casings from shootings that have occurred all over the country. And what they're doing is they're trying to analyze those shell casings to see if weapons have been used in multiple shootings all over the country. It's a really important crime fighting tool for law enforcement agencies. So they're actually doing that work on our campus. And if you think about it, if you're a criminal justice major, you now have great access to professionals who are, are uh, doing that kind of work every single day on our campus. We also, have, in addition to criminal justice, we have forensic science, we have homeland security, so lots of majors in that realm. The next bullet point that you see here, Wichita State KU Biomedical Center, uh, a handful of years ago, we went to our state legislator and said, listen, if we work together, Will you fund a brand new building between Wichita State and the University of Kansas to create the, uh, the biomedical center? So University of Kansas already has a med school and a pharmacy training program in Wichita, Kansas. At Wichita State, we already have a physician assistant program, uh, nursing, physical therapy, dental hygiene, a few other programs. Well, we're working to build a new building downtown. It's a $330 million project that we have already broken ground on uh, and is being built. It's a, almost a half a million square feet in downtown Wichita, and it will open sometime in late 2026, early 2027. Our president does the explanation on this uh, the best. He's a physician assistant by education and training. He was educated in the Houston Medical Complex. And what he talks about is that in Houston, he was not only educated and trained just for his area of expertise as a physician assistant, but he was also training around nurses and doctors and even pharmacists. So that's what happens when you or I go to the hospital, right? You are not just treated by a nurse. You are not just treated by a doctor. You're not just treated by a physical therapist. You're treated by all of those professionals working together in concert to give you the best outcome. So we got to train like that too. And so that's what we're doing in this new biomedical center. Um, we Eventually we will have about 3000 students in different medical programs in downtown Wichita. So this is transformational for our community downtown. 
Last few pictures that are on here, you also see a picture in the center of our future soccer stadium. We actually already have track and field at Wichita State. It's, it's a large sport for us. We actually host the largest track and field meet in the country every single year in high school. Uh, while we are in a multi-phase renovation for it, we are going to be adding NCAA Division I women's soccer within the next handful of years or so. So something we're looking forward to with this stadium. Uh, in the center, uh, where you see kind of a long image or a big image, a wide image, I should say, that is synthetic scenes. That is brand new tech. That's an LED screen. So synthetic scenes is actually a company that is located in Wichita. They came to us. We have a facility called Shocker Studios, which is about 12 to 15 minutes from our main campus. And it houses all of our media and digital arts programs. So that's like animation, filmmaking, game design, um, acting for the digital arts, audio production. Well, we didn't have that program about five years ago. Now we have more than 400 students in that program uh, who are studying in that particular facility every day. This company, Synthetic Scenes, came to us and said, hey, listen, there's some new technology out there. We're going to purchase it. We want to locate it in your studios. So they did. So this LED screen that you see here where there's an, uh, an individual standing in front of it, this is the latest in movie making and filmmaking technology. So it's think of the old green screen technology where you probably have seen a weather forecaster trying to show you where the clouds are coming in and this and that. Well, this is the same concept, but it's like way better. It's like the version 3.0. So uh, this is the technology being used to film movies like The Batman, Game of Thrones, House of Dragon, those kinds of things. So it's pretty cool tech. And the reason this company, Synthetic Seeds, put this in our building was because they want our students to help them with all of the real world projects that they're getting from companies and from film studios. So pretty exciting. The last picture that you see on the lower left, this goofy looking guy, this is the Marcus Welcome Center. We just finished a $5 million expansion to this building where we moved that career accelerator team that I talked about earlier. So as part of your campus visit, if you uh, choose to visit us in person someday, which we hope you do, of course, you'll actually not only get a tour of campus, you'll get a presentation from the admissions team, but as part of the tour, we're gonna walk you by the career accelerator's office because you need to know the professionals in that office, not, uh, not when you're a senior in college, but you need to get to know them as a freshman in college. We want you to start sitting down with our career professionals and coaches as early as your freshman year. Okay, I'm going to whip through the rest of this, and we're going to send this as a follow-up just as a reminder uh, after the event, but uh, these are the nuts and bolts of the application process. There's a $40 application fee. The application itself will only take you between 15 and 20 minutes. We don't require essays. We do ask that you report your GPA, your standardized test scores. We are completely test optional for both admission and scholarship purposes. Once you have applied for admission and been admitted, we will automatically consider you for scholarships. And I have a grid coming up just to show you what that would look like. I know parents are wondering, okay, well, how much does this cost? You know, what are we looking at here? So this gives you a rough ballpark. I know many of you are watching from one of what we call our shocker savings communities where we offer discounts to students from predominantly the Midwest. So I'll show you a slide with that. But if you're able and, and eligible, I should say, to pay in-state rates, this is the rough cost that you're looking at. Um, we are priced so that we are actually the most affordable research university in Kansas. And for many of you who are living in the Midwest, we're going to be the most affordable option for you amongst all research universities because we automatically provide some tuition discounts to most of you. Uh, you can see what your tuition dollars will bring you at Wichita State, um, including NCAA Division I athletic tickets uh, to all of our home competitions, fine arts performances, a YMCA membership. You get to access uh, one or any, I should say, of about 11 YMCAs in our greater Wichita community. We have one right on our campus too. They're really first class YMCAs. YMCA professionals from all over the country actually come to our campus to scope out the YMCAs and see how well they are run. You also get access to a GoCreate uh, Makerspace membership, and then you get a city bus pass, all as being uh, part of the cost of being a student. So I've mentioned this, and I just want to make sure we cover it quickly. For those of you who are hailing from some of these states and these cities in particular, just know that you will automatically qualify for in-state rates based off of where you live, specifically depending on what county you live in. So there's a website here. You can see wichita.edu slash shocker savings. My colleagues will drop that in the chat if they haven't already. That gives you the opportunity to look up your county to see what discount you would qualify for. If you do qualify for this, you automatically get it. There's no academic criteria. Criteria. There is no uh, application for it. You get it automatically and you would get it for both an undergraduate degree or even a graduate degree should you want to continue on with us at Wichita State.
Uh, for those of you who may not be eligible for those programs, we do have a couple of others, including one called Shocker Select. Um, so you can look at that here. You still get a good discount here. So I just want to make sure I mention that. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that once you're admitted, you'll automatically consider for scholarships. Uh, so you can see some upcoming dates here. What I want to make sure I do is uh, jump to this. Um, the items in bold are in-state uh, scholarship ranges uh, based off your GPA and your ACT, or we do offer a GPA-only scholarship too, so you see that here. And then the amount that's not in bold is the out-of-state award. So if you're paying uh, out-of-state uh, tuition or even a discounted rate, in some cases, you're going to get this scholarship um, or, or excuse me, if you're paying um, a full out-of-state rate, you're going to get this scholarship that's listed not in bold. So this gives you some sense of it. Um, uh, Wichita.edu slash scholarships would help you locate and triangulate what your scholarship would look like. We do offer many opportunities for students to go further in their scholarship journey with Wichita State. What I just showed you is just the beginning point. Our fresh, our financial aid team has already sent out about $3 million in financial aid offers and scholarship offers to students. Uh, so make sure you get admitted. It's really the best way for you to be considered and in the running. Uh, then we do additional scholarship competitions. I'm gonna have to fly through these, so just bear with me. You can see here, if you meet one of these criteria, then you'd be eligible. This is open for any major. We give away three sixty-four thousand dollars scholarships through this. Uh, and then it's an on-campus competition that occurs in November. We also offer many other competitions based on major. You can see some of the amounts are really large. So it really gives students an opportunity to go further depending on what major they are thinking about. Uh, for Kansas residents, this is only for Kansas residents. If you meet the criteria of being Pell Grant eligible uh, and you are, again, from Kansas um, and you have certain GPA requirements, then you might be eligible to apply for the Rudd Scholarship. It's a separate entity from the university, but they're a great partner of ours. Uh, we have more than 60 Rudd Scholars on our campus. The key website for this is wichita.edu slash Rudd Scholars. And again, we'll drop that in the chat. Uh, all right, my last couple of slides before I get to our next uh, piece. Um, we have a really active and robust student life, and so um, you can see all kinds of stats here. But what I will show you is a 60-second video to uh, highlight the first two weeks of student life at Wichita State. That was our Welcome Fest experience. We are going to wrap up. We do have a few other things here, so just stay with us. We promise uh, we'll provide some great information to wrap up our event tonight. Next up, we have several student ambassadors here, or a handful of student ambassadors here. I'm going to ask them to show camera so everyone can see who you are today. I want to say thank you to them for joining us. They're here to provide the perspective of what it's like to be a shocker. They are living and breathing the experience uh, right now, and so we always like to make sure we give you all, our guests, an opportunity to hear from current Wichita State students. So uh, I am trying to get back to my video panel. There we go. I see a few of our student ambassadors. I see my friend Israel. So Israel, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself, tell us your name, your hometown, what major you're pursuing, uh, and we'll go from there. So my name is Israel Torres. I'm studying mechanical engineering. I'm a freshman, and then I'm from Wichita, Kansas. All right. Thank you, Israel. Uh, I'm trying to rotate through all my screens here. Uh, Anna, I see you. Anna Brake. Hello, my name is Anna Brake. I'm from Wichita, Kansas, and I am studying the Honors Baccalaureate with concentration in public health and biology. Thank you, Anna. Good to see you. Sophie. Hi, everyone. I'm Sophie Walter. I'm a sophomore from Nina, Wisconsin. I'm studying marketing with a minor in history. Thank you, Soph. Kaylin. Hi, I'm Kaylin Schroeder. I'm studying social work. I'm from Overland Park, Kansas, and I'm a freshman here. All right, Bree. Hi, my name is Bree Pfeiffer. I am a junior studying biomedical engineering, and I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. 
Okay. I think I see, is that everyone? Did I miss any student ambassadors? Sorry if I missed you, but speak up if I did. Okay, I think we got everyone. All right, so uh, I'm gonna ask the first question, but uh, to our guests and our audience, if you do have any questions, we'd love for you to throw those in the chat. We want this to be reflective of the things you're interested in, but I'm gonna start. I'm gonna ask all of our student ambassadors to share what's been your favorite class so far, um, either this semester or previous semester, if you're not a freshman. Uh, uh, Sophie, I'm gonna talk, ask you first. Yeah, my favorite class is my Marketing 300 class. Um, I just like the class because, one, I have some friends in it, and then, two, the professor is really interesting, and the way she teaches the content is also interesting. So I really enjoy that along with the guest speakers I have in that class. Thank you. Uh, Bree, what about you? Yeah, so my favorite class right now is Intro to Biofluids. Um, I really enjoyed the content that we're learning in that class. And through that class, I also was made aware of an internship opportunity with Pfizer, which is really interesting to me. It's kind of my dream career right now. And currently, my biofluids professor is working on figuring out some undergraduate research opportunities for me and even involving people from Pfizer. So that class has been very, very beneficial to my career so far. Thank you, Bree. Anna? My favorite class that I've taken at WSU is Organic Chemistry 1. It was a difficult class, but I took it with a professor named Dr. Grudis, and he is a wise man. He taught the class so well. It made the organic chemistry a lot simpler, and I would always go to his office hours. I was even able to work in his research lab for a few semesters. So if you ever have the chance to take organic chemistry with Dr. Grudis, I highly recommend it. All right. Thank you, Kaylin. Uh, my current favorite class is Intro to Human Communication. I am taking it with, I really enjoy the professor, and it's just a very interactive class. So, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Great. And Israel? Yeah, so mine would be Honors Calculus, just because I feel like the professor is just really passionate about helping our students. Um, he's, like, really willing to kind of answer the phone at one in the morning and kind of answer your questions and help you out on your homework. But then also I just kind of appreciate just like how, um, how it's just like a different way of learning. And then also just how close you kind of get with the other classmates because you guys are all kind of experiencing this all at the same time. You guys start to kind of form a lot of pretty good friendships. Great. Thanks, Israel. So I don't see any questions yet in the chat, but for those of you who are living or have lived in the dorm, I know that's a question that uh, we sometimes get asked about. Uh, can we talk a little bit about the experience to live on campus, uh, what that's like, um, any tips you might recommend? Our housing application just opened for students who are have already been admitted and applied. Um, so can you talk a little bit about that? I know a couple, well, I see Israel's in his dorm room right now, but um, anyone's welcome to take that. Yeah, I can speak on that a little bit. Um, I lived in the suites my freshman year. I really enjoyed it um, just because they are more like private bedrooms, um, full-size bed. There's like a kitchenette inside, which was really nice for me. Um, I definitely also kind of wish I lived in Chalker Hall, though, just because it is a little more central to, cam uh, to campus and it's really close to the dining hall, which would have saved me a lot of walking my freshman year. Um, so there are definitely benefits to both. My main piece of advice would be to go and tour both of them. If you just go up to the desk at any point that you're on campus, if you're there for a campus visit or you just happen to be able to stop by, go up to the desk and ask them for a tour and they will be more than happy to show you like their model room and answer all your questions. And that way you can figure out what's the best fit for you personally. Great. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Do you does anyone have recommendations on what to bring to the dorms? What would you recommend future students bring to any collegiate dorm? Um, I can answer that one. If um, I, when I moved in, I definitely would recommend getting the giant Amazon bags and filling it with all of your stuff. Um, but in specific, I guess I have like, I've really enjoyed having just setting up your own space, bringing some like little things from home definitely helps with the adjustment from going from living at home to living somewhere else. Little things to just make it your own personal space. Great. Anyone else? Uh, Israel, I think I saw your hand. 
So if I'd recommend one thing, like I'm pretty minimalistic, but like if I were to recommend something, it'd probably be a mattress topper just because, you know, your sleep is very important. So just make sure that you're making that investment in a good quality topper just so you can have those bomb naps before your classes or just have a well nice rest every day. Israel and true living up to brand the minimalistic look behind him there nothing on the walls this nice clean look <laughs> all right uh let's see another question was is housing charged with tuition or is that like paying rent um, I might just take that one uh so uh, housing is a separate charge uh for students to live on campus uh it's essentially an all-inclusive cost meaning that you'll get a separate charge from tuition and fees First year students are required to live on campus, particularly if you are not from the local area. So in other words, if you're from out of state or perhaps a couple hours away, then you are gonna be required to live on campus uh, for your first year. And the cost that you're charged will include unlimited meals, all of the furniture for your room, Wi-Fi, electricity, you know, kind of all the basic utilities if you were to have an apartment, all of that is baked into the cost. Laundry is also included in the cost too. So depending on where you live, you might have the actual washer and dryer in your suite uh, or in your room, or it may be that there's one available on the floor and one meaning like a giant room full of washers and dryers uh, that are available to all the residents on that particular floor. And it's there's no cost to use those machines. Of course, you have to supply your own like um, soap and those kinds of things, though. OK, other questions. Sorry, I'm going to try to keep up with the chat here. Uh, unlimited question is what's the unlimited meals like? That's a good one. I like that. Who wants to answer that? I can touch on it a little bit. I don't have an unlimited dining plan right now, but I did my freshman year and I kind of wish I did now because it's really nice. Um, so if you're a freshman, your dining plan will be unlimited and then you can choose how many like dining dollars that you have. And that's what you can use at the different restaurants and stuff. Um, but for the unlimited part, that'll be at the Shocker Dining Hall. So essentially, that just means you can go in and get something to eat like any time of the day, like whenever you want, as often as you want. If you want to go in before your class and like grab an apple, you can. If you want to like go and get an ice cream cone just for fun, you can. If you want to go for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, dessert, like you absolutely can. And they always have a lot of different options. So you're not just going to be eating like the same stuff all of the time. Um, and then I think once you're an upperclassman, you have the option not to get that unlimited dining plan. You just get a certain amount of shocker dollars. But I personally think the unlimited dining plan is really good because that way, you know, you don't have to worry about cooking. You don't have to worry about groceries. You can just head down to the dining hall and there's always going to be an option for you. Great. Thank you. Uh, all right. I've got so many windows open trying to go back to the chat. Where is the chat? Uh, let's see. Can scholarships be applied to housing costs? Uh, I can take that one. It's kind of more of a technical question. So the answer is yes. Uh, if you do receive any scholarships from the university or many times uh, outside organizations will send your scholarship. So, for example, if your your parent has a scholarship that you earn from their employer and they're, they award it to you to attend the college of your choice, then they would often send that money to the university and then we would apply that to your account here. Typically, those scholarships would first be applied to your tuition charges. And then if there's money left over, we would apply that to your housing. So, yes, you could certainly use scholarships towards that. Uh, so this is a good question. We've spent a lot of time talking about housing, so I want to maybe pivot. This is a good question maybe for those who like to cook or maybe who would live elsewhere in the city and just want some recommendations on groceries. So I like this question. Livy is asking, where do you recommend getting things like groceries? Anna, do you? Yep, go ahead, Anna. Yeah, I personally go to Walmart. So there's a Walmart not too far from campus. It's just a few miles away. I really like that one. There's also a Hispanic store um, a few miles away from campus, more on the west side of town. They have really nice produce. It's really good. But Walmart, I would say, is probably the closest, most affordable option. There's also Dylan's not too far away. So yeah, there's definitely spaces to cook your own food if you'd like to. And for those of you in other communities, Dylan's is Kroger, it's uh, Ralph's. I was in California last week and I went to a Ralph's and I realized that's Kroger <laughs> or Dylan's as we call it here locally. So uh, lots of options. Anyone else want to take that? Like good stores, uh, uh, recommendations uh, like along those lines? I can add something. I personally love Costco. I'm a big Costco person. 
I don't know why. I just am. If you want like a lot of stuff, like in bulks, Costco's great because then it will last you a really long time. But then, like Anna said, there's Dylan's, but I also like Target. Me and my friends will just randomly go to Target on a weeknight and could spend an hour in there. They have groceries. And then it's just like our Target has groceries and then it's like the normal Target that you would think of. So I also recommend Target. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, so students are asking about bringing a car. Um, question is, are students allowed to bring a car? So answer is yes. Uh, sorry, I'm trying not to answer that one for you. But yes, students can bring a car any age. Uh, freshmen can bring uh, cars to campus. There is a parking charge for that. Uh, but if you choose not to bring a car, then you don't pay for that. Um, the charge, by the way, for parking is $150 for the year. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, Are, uh, is it worth it? Sorry, let me ask a different question. Um, well, what do jobs on campus look like? So, you know, a couple of you are working on campus. So can you speak to that a little bit? Uh, Anna, you're nodding. Do you, we can start with you. Yeah, so I work on campus as a research assistant. I really like it. So on campus, they're usually pretty flexible with you. If you have, for example, like finals coming up, a big test or family situations, they'll be really flexible with you and work with you. But the nice thing about working on campus is that you're on campus. You don't have to drive 15, 20 minutes away to your job. You're just right on campus working there. And you can make some pretty good connections with people on campus that'll definitely help you in your classes, in your future as well. And there's a lot of options of jobs on campus. So there's so many things that you can do on campus and you can definitely find something that is like the perfect fit for you. Thank you, Anna. Sophie, you want to tackle that one too? Jobs on campus? Yeah, I will. Um, so I have two jobs on campus. I'm a student assistant in our admissions office, and then I also give tours for our admissions office. And I think campus jobs are a great opportunity. Um, like Anna said, there are a lot of on-campus jobs. We use um, an online app, and you can find a lot of different on campus jobs like that you can they're really flexible with your student schedule as well so like you don't have to worry about classes they'll like work around it and then they're great opportunities to meet more people but also to establish connections with people on campus so like i mentioned i work with the admissions office so i've made a lot of connections with people in the admissions office that i would not have otherwise without working there so you can get a lot of great connections that can help you in your future career and just while you're a student Thank you, Sophie. I'm going to keep jumping. There's a lot of questions coming in the chat now. So student masters, after you're done with kind of this portion, I might ask that you stick around and try to reply to some of these questions if you don't mind, but I'm going to ask a couple out loud here. There's a really great question about uh, Christian churches on campus and near campus, including uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. I don't know if anybody in particular can answer that, but can we just talk at least a little bit about faith-based organizations? And Kaylin, go ahead. We'll start with you. Okay. So I have really gotten involved with St. Paul's. It's the Catholic church on campus. It's not like it's within walking distance. If you're not Catholic, there's lots of other different Christian organizations. I know there's navigators. I know there's challenge. There's a couple other ones. I don't know much about those ones, but there's definitely ways to get involved with all of those. Thank you, Caitlin. Anyone else want to speak to faith-based orgs? Yeah. Um, I also am involved with the Christian groups on campus. There's, um, as Kaylin said, Challenge Navigators. There's one by actually Fairmount Coffee, which is a coffee shop across the street from campus. And then for people from other faith backgrounds, there's also like the Muslim Student Association and there's a um, pretty strong religious community in Wichita. You can definitely find your place and find your people on campus and around Wichita. Uh, McKenna is asking, how far is parking from the suites? They actually have their own parking lot. So there's parking basically right next to the building. So that works out nice. Uh, there's uh, some questions about scooters and longboards. I think those are being answered in the chat. Um, there's a good question that might apply to more people. Uh, Tola is asking, how big are your classes? Uh, so maybe could a couple of you speak to just rough size of some of your classes? Just give our guests some sense of that. Israel, Bree, when do you want to speak to it? So the question was about class size, right? Yeah. Can you just speak to roughly how big are some of your classes that you're taking? Yeah, of course. So my more specialized classes are a little bit smaller. 
Um, right now, a lot of my classes are like eight to 10 people, um, which is really good because it allows for a lot more like one on one interaction with our professor. Um, a lot more of my gen ed classes, like my chemistry classes, my math classes, those were a little bit bigger, maybe um, 20, 30 people. Some of them even got up a little bit more to like 60. Um, but with that, it's more of like a lecture hall, I guess. But I've still had really good luck being able to communicate with my professor. I found that all the professors here just really care about your success and they want to help you in any way they can. Great. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak to that one? Are we good there? Just trying to go through all these questions here. I can Thanks. add something to that. Yeah, go ahead, Sophie. Um, I think it really depends, like Brie mentioned, on your classes too. Like for me, it, or if there is one class only one time offered, you're going to have more people. So for example, my marketing class, um, she there's only one professor teaching it only one time a day or one time for this semester. So we have... 195 of us in that class so that class is really bigger but where as like my history class for my minor there's 10 of us so I think it really depends on how many of that class is or how many times of that class is offered thank you Sophie uh let's see I think we've covered a nice range of these questions just trying to wade through the chat here uh, there's a couple of questions. Uh, I think maybe it's been, yeah, Brie answered it. Thank you, Brie. Uh, there's questions about where to store your scooter and bike. I think those have kind of been covered. So yeah, I think we've covered the majority of these things. So I'm going to ask, oh, here's another question that just came through. Can freshmen do paid internships in their field like aerospace engineering? My man, Israel, you have an internship. Can you speak a little bit to that and how you, uh, what that experience was like in your first semester freshman? So go ahead. Yeah, so I know there's, uh, so I know two other people that are in my same major that are all doing uh, co-op internships. And like what a co-op is, is that you're um, being a student and doing an internship at the same time and you're being paid for it. So I feel like in Wichita, there's a lot of opportunities to engage with aerospace companies, specifically like textron Aviation. So that's like Cessna and Beechcraft, uh, Spirit Aerosystems, um, Airbus, and then we also have NIAR, which is like the National Institute of Aviation Research. So there's a lot of many places that get experience. And a lot of the companies here are very open to freshmen and they're willing to take anybody in as long as you're motivated. So there's a lot of opportunities here to kind of get your, to build your resume and all that. Thank you, Israel. Okay, I think we've covered the majority of questions. Uh, student ambassadors, if you don't mind, just running through some of those just in the chat. And if there's any you wanna to add to, please feel free to do that. So thanks to all of our student ambassadors for joining us tonight. Really appreciate them uh, spending some time with us. They're busy. They probably should be doing homework or hanging out with friends, but they're choosing to be here. So thank you to all of you. Okay, I'm in the home stretch here. I just have a couple more slides and we'll get uh, everyone going here. I do want to mention we do have a great virtual tour that's available. Obviously, you all are comfortable with virtual events. My hope is you'll spend some time on our virtual tour. You see the URL for it there. Basically, this gives you 360 views of many spots on our campus. You can get a really good look and sense of what we offer at Wichita State. And we have them uh, by academic college. So we have some specific areas within each college that you can see. Uh, you can even see in this a slide here that we have um, a picture, a 360 view of our dining hall, um, our business school is on the lower right there. One of our um, internship opportunities that Israel mentioned is on the lower left there. Uh, that is one of our NIAR labs. So that's something that you can check out later. I also want to mention, we're really excited about this. We're going to be on an Amazon Prime streaming series this spring. So uh, here you see pictures from our filming that we just did on campus uh, about two weeks ago. It was a 10-day shoot. Uh, the gentleman that is in a black shirt, kind of in one of the center pictures here, this gentleman, his name is Alex. He uh, and another person won the second season of The Amazing Race, and he turned that into a whole college uh, show series. He helped his niece with her college search and realized he can help a lot of people with this, their college search. So basically, he and a camera crew came to our campus for 10 days. They filmed our campus. We gave them access to so much. Um, so everything that you're seeing here is going to be featured in the show at some point. We're going to air that show sometime in the spring. It'll be on Amazon Prime, a few others. About 150 colleges have been uh uh, a part of this uh, series so far. We're the first in Kansas uh, and, and amongst the earliest in the Midwest to be on there. So excited about that. Uh, then the last thing before we do some trivia and, and make, pick our scholarship winner, um, there's just some steps here to help you um, 
be thinking about uh, as you're completing your school year or start or in the midst of your school year, I should say, um, visiting in camp, uh, visiting us in person on campus is one way we recommend you see us. We also have some events uh, available coming up this month, Black and Yellow Day. It's a great way to see a lot of campus. We open up a lot of the doors to labs, facilities, uh, getting to engage with our academic colleges is also part of that experience. So please check that out. Uh, the virtual tour I mentioned and then the e-college tour I mentioned as well. If you wouldn't mind taking a few minutes, there is an evaluation that uh, with the QR code here. And again, we're happy to send you a Shocker t-shirt for that. Uh, I'm going to move forward and we're going to do some fun trivia uh, just to round out our night. And then we're going to pick our scholarship winner. So first question, and we pick winners, by the way, by having the first correct answer in the chat. So get your chat pulled up and get ready. So, uh, and you can cheat if you want, you can, you know, search the internet for the right answer, but I'm going to guarantee someone else is probably going to know it or, or at least uh, be ready a little quicker on the chat. So first question is we've had two brothers found a major business, global business at Wichita state. Can anyone name that business? Uh, I think I got it already. Livia got it right. And that's Pizza Hut. So Pizza Hut was founded by two brothers who attended Wichita State. Uh, they started making uh, pizza in the basement of a fraternity house. They moved it to uh, their first building in Wichita. It's literally a hut. It's a tiny little building. And now it's actually a museum on our campus. It's a 400 square foot museum, tiniest museum you'll ever see, but it's awesome. It's a really great way for our students to have showcased an entrepreneurship experience. So that's Pizza Hut. Next up, our master mascot a bundle of what what is he a bundle of wheat jennifer groves i see you're the winner of that so jennifer we're going to send you your prize pack along with the t-shirt so congratulations jennifer uh but this is uh our friend wushok he is um Sorry, I'm pointing to the wrong tree. This is our friend Wushok down here. Uh, he's a bundle of wheat. Uh, we got that nickname because uh, back in the day, our students would often work wheat harvest to earn money for tuition and for uh, uniforms for athletics. And so ultimately, uh, we became the Wheat Shockers, and that was shortened to Shockers over the years. So that's that. Uh, and then my last question is... Um, I mentioned that we're going to be on a streaming series on Amazon Prime. What is that called? College tour. Ian, I think it was Ian was first. So Ian will send you a prize pack as well, as, as well as the t-shirt from watching this event. So Ian, uh, we'll hook you up. Thanks for uh, listening and, and getting that out there. Okay, so I think I am done with all my trivia. The last thing is I'm going to make sure I do a quick drawing here for uh, scholarships. Uh, let me get that pulled back up. Just bear with me. So if uh, whoever wins this, whoever's name I call, if you wouldn't mind uh, sticking around, because uh, we'd just love to take a, a virtual picture with you here um, so we can um, brag about you to everyone back in the office here. So let me just get back to my wheel. So I'm spinning a wheel and we're going to pick a $1,000 scholarship recipient. And the winner is... Jordan Shepard. Congratulations, Jordan. All right, Jordan, congratulations. So if you wouldn't mind just sticking around, we'll make sure we get a picture with you here at the end, if that's okay with you. Okay, that's what we have for tonight. We're so thankful that you spent some time with us. Apologies that we went over just a little bit on our time, but thanks for sticking uh, with us. Uh, thanks for uh, being here. Thanks for asking questions. Thanks for being engaged. We will be sending you all a t-shirt in the mail just as a small thanks for being here. So hope everyone has a great night. Thank you to all my academic colleagues and university colleagues for being here as well. Cheers.